Okay. Boom. We are live. What's up, guys? So we got a fun podcast with John Anthony Lifestyle, formerly known as j I'm just going to call him John, joining us. So for this for this stream, we have a little bit of a theme. We're going to focus on looks maxing. So John and I have both done some things to looks max, and John has actually done uh, more than me. So I think he's a good person to discuss this with. So yeah. that's way, let's jump into it. So John, give a little introduction and uh, yeah. What's up, guys? Yeah, I've been on Alex's channel a lot. We we uh, officially only recommend each other as the featured channels. Yeah, but <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I did add a few more to the list. There's like two more, but you're one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have to remove you. No, but <laughs> no, I had Bradicus at one point. He was showing so much um, proof and in infield and shit like that. He claims like 600 count. I believe it. Probably but yeah, so. Alex and I are two of the only channels that offer straightforward, practical, no bullshit advice in the dating space where you actually can uh, go and do stuff and see results from it rather than just get mental masturbation. My channel is uh, John Anthony Lifestyle. And my big claim to fame is I have banged 1,437 girls. Now we went on a little run this past weekend. Uh, and I have a video showing all the proof for that. So it is a real number. Unlike Mr. Walter Weeks from Fresh and Fit. Uh, what else? Oh, I have a eight-week program, PlatinumDatingSystem.com. You can sign up for a free 30-minute call, and we'll walk you through how we can fix all your problems in the game and get you to all your goals. One note on looks maxing. Uh, I used to – basically, my friendship with, with Sonny Arvado ended like three years ago over the looks maxing stuff where he was like creating a looks maxing forum, and he's like, oh, the game is all looks. Basically, the, the, what the black pill says, right? You've been debating these guys. I, I tore up wheat waffles in his uh, critique of me and that this and that. Let's be clear. So my official stance after talking to shitloads of hot girls, studying evolutionary psychology, et cetera, I would put the looks part of the equation as like 10 to 20%. I think game is by far the most important. And I can back that up with endless amounts of empirical evidence. Basically, I've been coaching this for over 10 years, gotten tons of average and below average looking guys laid in the multi hundred lay counts with girls that are very, very attractive. And I've done that thousands of times. Okay. So it's not just, Oh, I know a guy I do that consistently. Okay. And I've also gotten short clients laid like crazy and in, in Indian clients, but I'm not a coach that say looks don't matter. Okay. Everyone should still be trying to maximize and optimize what they present themselves as right. Like why do we get a haircut? Why do we like trim our beard? for the same reason why you would do some of these other things we're going to talk about on this podcast. But that's not to say that the game is all looks or even a large part of looks in, in my view. And again, I, tons of objective empirical evidence, evolutionary psychology arguments. The, the whole narrative basically goes that um, women are attracted to survival and replication value, your ability to lead other men, protect loved ones, provide, um, you know, the way you carry yourself. Do you have a backbone? You know, are you comfortable in your own skin? These are the things that women are attracted to. The looks part of the equation is mostly a threshold thing. Don't be super skinny. Don't be super overweight. Don't dress like shit. Don't wear clothes that are, you know, massively not fitting you and this and that. But we'll go into the different categories. But I just want to be clear up front. This isn't meant to be like, yeah, the game is all looks. Like go hardcore looks max. Because those looks maxing forums are, are largely unproductive and incredibly toxic. Mm. It's just a bunch of guys insulting other guys for not looking like a model. So just make one fucking yeah. other's jaws and stuff. Let me comment on what you said. So you and I largely agree. There's probably one thing that I would disagree with you on, but we largely agree. So I'll start off with what I, what I agree with you on. I agree that those forms are largely unproductive because it's not guys taking action. It's usually guys just fantasizing, mentally masturbating about various surgical procedures like, oh, do you see this rhinoplasty that you can do? You can make your nose 20% smaller. It's like most of those guys, I would venture to say, and I would feel comfortable making a bet um, that... 95% of the guys in the black belt community have not maximized their fitness. I would even say that 90% of them haven't even gone to the gym in a while. Like it's like the numbers are pretty bad. Like every single time I talk to a black pillar, they have, and I asked them like, Oh, so, you know, you think looks are all that matters. So that means, you know, you must be working really hard at the gym. Oh uh, yeah. You know, it's been a while, you know, the gym's not that important. Um, so, that's my take on that. So I do agree that it's largely unproductive. I do agree also that game is a humongous component. So it's not just all looks. The one area where yeah. you and I disagree is I think it's more than 10, 20 percent. I would probably put it at uh, the way I've always viewed it is it's like it's like equally important sides of the same coin. So it's like what's more important in a car, the carburetor 
or the transmission. They're both important. They're both necessary to drive the car. Um, so I never saw it as like, oh, focus on this, don't focus on that. I always saw it as focus on optimizing your SMV and your SMV is largely look, looks, but social also market. Yeah, social, yeah, social market value. Yeah, but it's also things like status and stuff like that. Uh, and also the way you present yourself, you carry yourself, your body language can indicate things about your sexual market value. So it's a little bit more than looks, although looks is a large component of it. Um, and at the same time, learn game. Now, the difference, I think, is that with your looks, you're only capable of improving it so much. So what does that mean? You can have a yeah. guy who's a four. He can become a 6.5, maybe, but he's not going to become an eight or a nine. That's not possible unless that guy was grossly overweight. And the only reason he was a force because he was grossly overweight and then he lost like with those extreme examples out of the way, uh, you're not going to increase about more than two, 2.5 points, but you can increase your game. If your game is objectively a quote unquote four, you can take your game to a nine or a 10 or an eight, whatever. So I do to think that there's more of a cap with looks, but that's not to say it's not important. I still think it's very important on looks maxing uh, as much as possible within reason. Uh, I'm not a big yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying I'm not a big proponent of surgery. This is one of the things uh, I don't know if you saw the live stream I did last night. One of the no. guys was saying, he's like, yo, man, like, you know, you talk about shit on your channel, but you don't talk about the real important things. I was like, what are the real important things? He's like, like surgery. I was like, well, that's because I'm not a big proponent of surgery unless it's an extreme case where like you're deformed or something like that. But I'm not going to feel comfortable like recommending. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to recommend surgeries on my channel. Um, the second thing, the second example he brought up, he's like, well, what about doing like steroids like this guy Z's did? And then this guy Z's died in his 20s. So I'm also not comfortable like telling people to do like hard steroids. Like, I mean, I personally have been public about this. I do TRT and HGH. But there's a big line between doing that, which is in therapeutic doses, and doing like, you know, uh, DECA or whatever in bodybuilding doses. Like that shit most of the time significantly decreases your, um, your life expectancy. So the only thing where I draw the line is I'm not going to give people advice that can hurt them. Um, or has a high potential yep. to them. So that's kind of why I don't talk about the uh, surgeries uh, or using steroids, uh, because again, that shit has a high potential to hurt. Yeah, and you, and you, and I, you, and both, you and I both take TRT. I just started yeah. with like two or three years ago. I'm 38 because my levels are low. I think I fucked my endocrine system from like just years of endless drinking and night game. Um, but yeah, like, like what you said about like, um, yeah, like steroids being dangerous and shit. I was at the gym just before this, like I didn't even fucking shower yet. And it was there's just shitloads of roided guys there. And those and it does fucking harm your health. And you do die young. I'll never touch steroids. Ooh. It's stupid. People think like TRT is steroids, but that's putting your testosterone levels back to where they're supposed to be when you're in like your late teens, low twenties. Um, if you if you do it in uh yeah. It adds life as, well, as long as you don't blast it. So, for example, there's some bodybuilders who will take the same things we do, testosterone. But they'll do four times the dose that we do because they, they don't want to just uh, do therapeutic. They will do, uh, you know, they call them hero doses and shit like that. Like, you know, you and I will do like 150 milligrams a week. They'll do like 500 or one gram a week, right? You get a completely different outcome. But also it takes much bigger yeah. toll on your health when you go like down that rabbit hole. Yeah, what you said too about um... – to not care about shit you can't change, right? Like, like guys will fucking obsess about their height to the end of the day. Like, yeah, like I'm six foot four, right? They're always like, oh, it's very convenient to say, oh, height isn't like super, super important. I'm I'm not a guy that says we're all on the same playing field. Let's be clear about that. That was RSD. RSD says everyone is on an equal playing field. We're all cut from the same cloth, which is all fucking bullshit, right? That was just a good marketing ploy. I'm not, I, I would never say that. That's a, That's obviously... Like, like, what is Tinder then if everyone looks equal? Um, but that being said, like, guys should just focus on what they can change and not obsess about it, right? So get a better physique, get a better haircut, uh, do some other little minor things that we're going to talk about. And I'm going to talk about the different things that I did. And I did a lot of them recently in, like, the, the past year. I got my game kind of not maxed out, but I got it very, very optimized. I don't think it can ever be maxed out. And then I did the SMB stuff. Now it's like ultra, ultra, ultra easy mode for me because I was already banging stunners for the past 10 years, which I have proof of. There's guys in the comments, oh, he's a three, he's a two. Wheat Waffles already said that. Let's be clear about something, right? I have more proof than anyone in the whole industry, I think, than most of the rest of the industry combined. Once you add in like Bradicus, who's like wiped off the, off the planet now. Um, and the other channels are like going down, like Swan Casanova's removed, Tom Trero's removed because they're idiots and filming sex acts. But... Um, like 
I've banged 1,437 girls at this time of the recording, right? And I have tons of proof of that, and tons of proof that a lot of them are extremely hot. And I've shown all that, right? So you can't, the black pill guys, we don't need to turn this into a black pill debate or, or it looks the whole equation. It's fucking stupid. If I'm a two or three, how am I banging nine pluses for over a decade, having threesomes with them? Like me and my main chick in Brazil had over fifty threesomes in the past year and a half. So they they would they would <laughs> they would they would say because uh, I had this because uh, I'm white. It's because I'm white. No 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 no. So th they would say that you're lying. That that's how they would say that. Because when I was on uh, MD's channel, uh, I, he they rated me a five. I was like, okay, so if I'm a five, what kind of results should I get? And they're like, well, at best, you get the, the occasional average girl. I was like, okay, so how do you bang all the? How do you explain all the attractive girls I bang? Like, well, clearly the only conclusion is that you're a liar. Yeah, it's super dumb. It, it's like <laughs> here's the thing: it's like trying to debate like someone that believes in flat Earth or like a hardcore religious person. Like, there, there's no way to win that argument, right? Even though we have all the objective empirical evidence on our side, there's no way to win the argument because they're just fucking retarded. Like, here, here's I what think, I, here's I think it's what I'll so say. fun. Yeah, it's fun, but like, here's what I'll say: like, I had a client yesterday. He's like. He's like seen firsthand me like pull tons of hot girls, right? He's he, I've known him for a while, and he's like, dude, I looked on the on like some of the comments, like when you were on like the twenty one convention interview, everyone's like dissing you for a tank top, wearing a tank top. They're saying there's no way you can get girls because you have a tank top. I'm like, dude, listen, like, do you know how much like fucking hate shit people say over email and on YouTube? I'm sure you get it too. I probably mean much more because I'm a shit starter. You get more, but, but I guess some, yeah. But like, it's just like endless amount. Oh, there's no way he could get a girl. Like, this guy's charisma is terrible. This guy looks like shit. This guy's a zero. This guy's a negative five. The I, I said to the client, I go, dude, look at the facts. I've banged 14, 1,437 girls. I have endless proof of that. A lot of them incredibly hot. For over a decade, I've been running like huge stunner rotations with bisexual main girls or girlfriends, having threesomes, foursomes, living a life like only people like Hugh Hefner have lived, right? And he and he was doing it all with fucking money. And I did it through like hardcore blood, sweat, and tears doing the fucking hard work in the game, right? So does it matter that some fucking 19-year-old fucking loser in England thinks I'm a two? And they're like, they originally called me a three. They're like, he's downgrade you a two. I go, he can downgrade me to a fucking zero or a negative infinity. What does it fucking matter? Right? It's it's like a little kid on the playground being like, you're a poopy head. Okay. Right? Like, <laughs> it's like, what what do, what do his comments mean? What do all these comments on you? There's no way you could get girl. Okay, but I am more so than like pretty much anyone except athletes and celebrities. Let me ask right. you this question. Do you believe dudes can accurately uh, rate other dudes? Because I'm a believer that yeah. if you're a straight guy, you, you're, yeah, I, I agree. Within a ballpark, yes. Within but a ballpark, like, but not I've, within, I've had, within, within, within a, a large ballpark. Yeah, I have a team of three nine pluses that rate uh, all my clients' photos objectively and extremely honestly with decimal points from one to 10. So on my program, I'll shout out one more time, platinumdatingsystem.com. We have guys get a pro photo shoot and then we have the girls pick out the top five, rate them one to 10, and then we apply aesthetic upgrades. So you're going from average photos to pro photos to the best of your pro photos and then maxing out the aesthetics on those pro photos. That doesn't mean looks matter or, or the, uh, looks are like the whole part of the equation. I, mean, I misspoke. Of course, looks matter. But you're trying to, it's like a lead magnet in a marketing world when you're doing online dating. And so you need to make a good impression in order to get a conversation started. But from there, it's all about your online game messages and then your text messages and then how you run your date and then how you do the close of the house and then how you retain. So to make it through that funnel, that's all game. And these guys that say game doesn't exist, it's, I see it as tantamount to guys claiming the earth is flat or even dumber because like clearly there's better text to send than others. Clearly yelling like, hey, cunt. Like, like there was Chris Wilde from Social Prime. We were on my balcony in Poland uh, before I like, you know, called him out in his own conference and they pushed out and we're like, oh, we respect that, man. <laughs> the, the, world, the, the industry is like softer than anyone could possibly imagine and more corrupt than anyone could possibly imagine. I'm like, dude, if game doesn't exist, okay, we could simply just, we could just prove this instantly. Like we could just run a controlled experiment where we send these texts versus these texts and you're going to see a massive difference in performance or a girl walking down the street, I could yell, hey, bitch, or hey, cunt. Versus like going downstairs and cold approach. You were at that apartment, I think, in Poland as well. Um, oh, we met in Poland. We yeah. hung out. With, <laughs> we went to some fucking health health restaurant. Yeah. Um, well, basically, like it was like three floors up, whatever. Basically, yelling down, catcalling. By the way, they're outlawing catcalling in, in England potentially. It's our world.
Um, <laughs> but basically, like, I was like, dude, just yelling something at a girl versus going up and doing a good approach. And then every step of the way, right? Like you could, there's better ways to do every part of the game from a macro perspective, from a micro perspective that are going to lead to significantly better outcomes at every step of the way. It's a, it's a funnel, right? Yeah, so you can lose, the choir. It, yeah. it can bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But just so the people watching, it's just such a dumb argument to say game doesn't exist or it's a small part of the equation. I'm sure this happens with you too. Like very consistently guys from my program that have never fucked a girl ever and have been trying for 10 years or they've, had incredibly minimal results and I turn that shit around and they start getting laid like one a week or like sometimes even two a week very consistently and it happens in week one or week two and once you do that thousands of times right the, the, the well first of all you could tear these arguments down from rational perspectives from evolutionary psychology this and that I might just make like an extremely long video just showing endless proof but again people are going to say black that won't watch it they'll 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 just say but we that's why to me, that's why to me it's a dumb topic anyways let's let's you know it's we're going off topic yeah, yeah. We, both agree, we both agree that yeah game we, is, we both, is, we both is agree game, the game, game, is, game is crucial do you want me to rattle off the smb shit i did let me let, let's do that but first let me actually uh show the pictures uh of me before and after and then we'll uh we'll get into it so of you sure. yeah and then we'll do yours okay. so we'll share the screen by the way, Andrew Tate's live on Fresh and Fit right now. <laughs> I don't know what those yeah. guys are doing. He, I have no comment on that. He said okay. it's because they're a big platform. So, oh, yeah, I remember that picture. Me in 2000, I believe, 16. Look at, the, look at this guy. I have not a single muscle to speak of. Dude, I was... I was um real quick. I was 155 pounds in college at six four. Now I'm like two fifteen. This is so me I like, after I started working out. Now look look at also my hair. Like this is a fucking mop. Like look how bad that looks. Like just my just my facial style. Like this is before I realized how important it is to get like a fresh haircut. Like it's just like like Jew curls and like it just looks yeah, it just looks like my head is giant. Uh, no muscle again. Just look like a little prepubescent boy. But I'm like. 27 in this photo or 26 like i'm not young yeah uh, no dude i was yeah i was skinny as fuck i just did the conversion i was 155 pounds 70 kilos in college at six foot four at 193 centimeters and now i'm nice yeah it's a big difference compare that to yeah. now like tattoos right i think tad you and i both agree tattoos help they're not a humongous game changer but they're definitely helpful muscle like actually fill out space uh, look at my just hair and face. So like actually grew out the beard, got a good cut. Like that makes a huge difference in the face. Uh, also the cool thing is when you lift, your face starts to look better. You develop more neck muscles. Uh, it's better for your jaw. So like by lifting weights, heavy weights, you're actually improving your face to some extent as well. Combine that with getting a sharp haircut. It's just like a nine day difference. Yeah. Like, let's, let's take a look. I want to sh show this picture. I don't know if you've seen this yet, John. This is my business partner. Look at the before and after. <laughs> Look at this. Like, <laughs> yeah. This guy looks like he's fresh off like some fucking, uh, I don't even know, like Farvella in India where, you know, this is like the first food he's had in weeks. Like he looks emaciated. <laughs> so much better. Yeah. Got rid of the glasses. Cut the yeah, hair. Just a quick note too. Are you like a classified as like a hard gainer, like an ectomorph? Like yeah, I am, yeah. Kind of yeah, me too. I heard this dude uh, years back, right? It, he, he made two really great points about lifting. So he said, like, he, he's like, dude, I'm a hard gain. I was like, I can't. I'm so fucking skinny. It's hard for me to gain weight even when I eat a lot. He goes, you just have to eat more. Like, there, there's no such thing as a hard gain. Like, you just have to because it's your basal metabolic rate plus whatever yes. calories you expend from exercise. Yes. You need 3,500 calories on top of that to gain a pound and 3,500 calories in a deficit to lose a pound. It's literally that simple. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Jay Vincent before this. I have a client that's overweight. I'm like, what's your fast track to lose weight? He's like, just eat less. That's it. He's mm -hmm. like, that's the only fat loss advice that I would give someone eat less because then you go into a caloric deficit. But so if your basal metabolic rate is higher because you're, you have a fast metabolism and you're burning calories faster, you just need to simply eat more. And you can measure this stuff in a controlled way by measuring your weight from week to week. And if you're not putting on weight, add 500 calories a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And then seven days, that's 3,500 extra calories, which is a pound. Right. So 
that's how I put on weight is by eating like 3,500 to 4,000 calories a day. Um, and then what's the other fucking part? Oh, and the other uh, part he said is that you have to think of lifting like stacking paper plates. So it's like if you're trying to watch yourself age and you're like, oh, I'm not aging. I'm going to give up. That's what people are doing in the gym. They're like looking for like a quick result. Oh. Right. Of course, you got to be following a plan that, that works, not just fucking spinning your wheels, which is what most people are doing is. Jay, Jay Vincent said on that podcast on my channel that most people are just moving weight around unless you're going past the threshold where you're pushing your body to failure or to a stimulus that it can't hold that it can't um, handle and it's not going to grow. So, but yeah, you got to think of it like stacking plates. So for the past year, um, I got a trainer and I went three days a week for a while. And then I was going five days a week for a while. But when I was doing three days a week, I was doing Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and stuff. For a while, I was doing Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu uh, one-on-one with instructors uh, every day. And then I kind of toned the martial arts back a little bit and then toned up the gym a little bit, started doing five days a week. But according to Jay Vincent, you shouldn't work out successive days in a row because you're doing systemic overload in your body. Your body's building back up when you're on your off days. This doesn't need to be a fitness video, but but yeah, getting a trainer and learning proper form on all the exercises and, and having a proper routine and having someone do your macros for you is a good start. Um, okay. Do you yeah, want to show my picture? Yeah. Yeah. I want to add on what you said. I think another big thing is getting an app called uh, my fitness pal. So you can tracking mm -hmm. all your calories. Uh, when I was having a really hard time put, um, for a while, I was a, right around 145. I could not crack 150. And when I started tracking my calories, I cracked 160, uh, within a month and a half. Uh, you quite often you're either eating more or less than you think. Like you think you're eating all this food, but in reality, you're eating like 2,500 calories a day which if you exercise, that's not that much if you're a hard yep. So keeping tracking your calories and eating calorie dense food. And then that's, that's really the way to go, whether you're trying to uh, put on weight or lose weight. I think that there's a lot of things that, you know, could be up for debate, like whether you should work out successive dates or not do split routines or whole body. But well, I think the two things that are not up for debate is one calories in calories out. I mean, that's been pretty proven and progressive overload. So like you said, stacking plates in the gym and getting yep. stronger on key lifts. And like, if you do those two things, you're gonna make gains. And yeah, yeah. Like, for, regardless for really, of what you do. Yeah, for like a really comprehensive game plan and like busting the fitness myths, check out the interview I did with Jay Vincent on my channel. Cool. I'm oh yeah, let's, let's share that picture. I got another one for you too. So the the one that you're gonna show now, this was just me uh, after a drinking bender, maybe like three four years ago. I quit drinking about two years ago, uh, September sixth. So it's been about two years and three months as of today. That's um, yeah, thanks. But like, I, yeah, I plan on never drinking again. I basically had a, a problem with it because I was in the nightclubs every day. I was going on dates every day. And I'm like half Irish, half Polish, and there's alcoholism on both sides. So that kind of like got the best of me. Well, I admitted that on my channel. Um, but yeah, I had to go to like an outpatient rehab program for like group sessions like three days a week for like five months and that finally helped me kick it for good have you been able to get to kava a little bit it kind of makes me stupid like when we were at the 21 convention I, <laughs> I took a bunch of kava with you and just like sedates you and make makes me like a little fucking dumb but yeah really? i like I guess yeah. it affects everyone differently i i prefer and i'm gonna do a video on this i prefer taking uh fina butt when I do night yeah, game, but funny the problem is funny, but is kind of addictive. You can't do it more than two or three days a week. Yeah, I do it like once a week. Yeah, once a week is fine. Like but, Kava, you could drink every night, but funny boot, like if you do that every night, you're fucked. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna send you one more picture that shows me when I was like really skinny as well. Okay, cool. Do you want to just pull them up yourself? Um no, you can because I got all this other shit open on my computer. Okay. All right, I gotta then just email it to me. Cause all right. can I send it on WhatsApp? If you email it, it would be better because uh, then I'd have to just email it to myself anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is when I was, I don't know, fuck it. I guess I could show. If you could, it would be easier because I'm going to have to go through this process of emailing. All right. Yeah, I can show. Let me just um, let me just pull up the alcohol one as well. This was like after a drinking bender. You can see my face was like bloated, pale, um, fucked up different parts were like sunken in i have like a really crazy before after that i couldn't find of, of like basically like when i like came off a super bender in ukraine of drinking and i, and I just looked like i was about to die <laughs> to now i get like tons of confidence in my body 
now. Oh, do you have that one picture I sent you that's like in the thumbnail? That was from this past weekend. Yeah, I got a very email to myself. Yeah. All right. So here I'm going to put <laughs> these pictures are out of control. Um, I'm just putting these together here. Oops. Let's see. Give me one second, guys. But in terms of, do you want me to, um, you want me to go over the different SMB stuff I did as well? Well, yeah, you know, but let's first show the pictures and then we'll get into the SMB stuff. Okay. So this is, yeah, this is fucking bad. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, I got sent. Oh, let me see if I got I'm gonna it. Do, I'm going to do a share screen. Share screen. All right. Can you guys see this? We got to add it to the stream. There we go. Okay. So this is on the left here. This is like when I was in graduate school in England. I was like maybe 155, 160 pounds. It's like 70 kilos, 71 or two kilo. Now I'm um, around like 215 pounds, like 97, 98 kilo. I'm going to work up a little bit more. And hey, let me turn this off for a second. I'm going to turn it, pull up one more picture here. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull up one more thing. But yeah, basically just consistency, having a trainer, eating more during the macros, right? Eating pretty healthy, not drinking. That all led to a, a pretty significant improvement physique-wise. Uh -huh. Let me let me pull up some of these uh, photos that you uh, that I emailed to myself. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna show one more in a sec here. Do you see this? Yep. Yeah, that was uh, that was in college. <laughs> that was when I was a. I think that's when I was a. Oh no, I I was at a low lake count at that point. That was uh, like ten lake count or something like that. Damn. <laughs> I you went into you were such a nerd. <laughs> I went into college at zero lake count. I went into my third year of college at three lake count. I finished undergrad actually at 17, which just because I started getting like confidence from drinking. And then I had a hundred. Um, so I had a hundred like 10 years after I lost my Virginia. I had a hundred in June, 2012. And then I hit, uh, let's see, 300 in May, 2014. I had a thousand December, 2018. I moved to Brazil in February, 2020 at 1179. And now currently it's um, 1,000. 437. So let's talk about the, um, the, uh, all the things that you've done. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to show one, one last picture here, the, the lifting, but yeah, I can go through that. So I did last year, I did Botox on my forehead. You do that every, I think it's once a year. Can you once talk about what kind of effect that had? Um, okay. So the way that, the way that the dermatologist explained it, I wish I would have started doing this in my twenties because, um, she said like gravity is pulling on your skin, like wrinkles is because gravity is pulling your skin down uh -huh. and it starts to become apparent even in your late twenties. Like my chick started to do it now. She just turned 29 uh -huh. and she's going to do it for the first time because what you're doing when you, when you do it is it puts in like this shit that like paralyzes the skin, like it paralyzes it. So it keeps it, it like keeps it like wherever it is when you started it. So you just have to keep doing it every like six, it's either six months or a year. I think it's a year. Uh -huh. And then if you stop doing it, like the wrinkles will come back to where they were when you started it, but you just keep doing it. It's not that expensive. I also did the eye bag fillers because I have like thin skin here. They just put in like different shit. That's like every <laughs> nine months or something. We've got a puppy now too. He's fucking chilling downstairs. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I did teeth whitening. I did the hair transplant. Which I want to I want to do the teeth whining, you know, so I can my next thing. My teeth yeah. definitely need some work. The hair transplant, I was, it was receding kind of like how yours is a little bit. And uh, <laughs> no, you should do, you're going to do the transplant though. Well, I, so I might, but what I've been doing is I've been doing exosomes. It's a pretty new experimental technology, but it's supposed to work just as good as a hair transplant. Once you do all rounds of three, I want my second round. Actually, honestly, I'm already seeing like some progress. Like it's not as bad as it was. If you look at my streams, it's not as bad as it was uh, two months ago. 
like i have game oh, really? like for sure like it's not obviously it's not perfect yet at all but there's not like that major like there was like that fucking like receding shit that's kind of gone a little bit so i have nice. one more one more round to go through and then after that i have to give it like two months and if i'm if i'm not happy with it then i'll do the hair transplant but i want to try this first yeah um the cool thing with the hair transplant is it's permanent so now that hair in the front is like there for life but mine was receding and i'm six foot four so people couldn't really tell and i used to have my hair spiked up but you couldn't really tell until i like went like that and it's funny because everyone's like oh the hair transplant didn't work and like oh it looks like shit and all this and i was like nope it takes one year to re regrow you stupid idiots that's what i mean like all the fucking comments on youtube are mostly just fucking retards just trying to troll and stuff but <laughs> our lovely fans but basically uh no i love you guys but uh six months more for full regrowth and he had me taking finasteride to prevent additional hair loss but i i stopped that because it blocks the dht stuff different yeah i was gonna ask did you get any side effects with that with the finasteride? Uh, he claimed he claims sexual side effects are like two percent mm -hmm. But it did feel like my libido went down and I didn't like that it was blocking testosterone. So I, I stopped it. And there's an alternative that does pretty much the same thing as finasteride without blocking DHT. What is that it? I'm going to be starting soon. I don't remember. Somebody emailed me. I need to fucking look it up. Is it salt metal? No. It's, I don't remember the name of it, but I'm, I'm going to start doing that. Um, I also am using minoxidil yeah, on my too. beard. And also up in here, I'm using minoxidil on my whole head, actually. That helps mm. uh, increase blood flow to those areas and helps the hair grow better and thicker. I also use shampoo that is, like, for, like, thinner hair and hair loss and stuff. But, yeah, there's six months more on the transplant, but it's coming in pretty nicely. I did collagen injections on my face. How does that work? Um, it basically, like, just puts – they put collagen in, like, around here and here and here, and it makes, like, your skin more youthful. I also take a lot of longevity supplements, like a fuck ton. I take like over 100 pills a day. But everything's like calculated to like combat oxidation, to combat inflammation, to combat advanced glycation end products, to uh, make telomeres divide slower. Like all, it's it's all calculated to just prevent disease. And can, like, you, can you talk about that? Can you talk about what exactly you take? Um. It's a fuck ton of stuff. Basically, if you Google uh, Ray Kurzweil supplement regimen, I just took a bunch of the major things from there. Ray Kurzweil spends a million dollars a year. Yeah, uh, I'm familiar with him. Supplements. He's like a big. Uh, he he came up with the whole idea of the law of accelerating returns. He's the director of engineering at Google now. But I've been reading his book since high school, where he talks about the technological singularity, double exponential growth of information technologies mm -hmm. surpassing. Uh, human intelligence and then recursively self-improving in a closed feedback loop without any need for human intervention, which will be a runaway phenomenon and intelligence explosion. And that's coming very soon. So we can all be excited about that. Uh, <laughs> I don't make our professions somewhat obsolete, but it won't yeah, you, you and I disagree. I don't really foresee that happening anytime soon in our lifetimes, but that's, that's the topic. The, pro the problem is everyone mistakenly thinks that technological progress is linear, but it's actually double exponential. No, that's I, I get that. Yeah, I get that's exponential. So the, the major supplements I take, um, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, mixed to cough for all vitamin E. Um, I have a I have a video on it that goes through a lot of the stuff. I take um, the different anti-aging stuff that's, that David Sinclair talks about, uh, NMN, which is a precursor to NAD+, plus, uh, resveratrol, transresveratrol, 98% standardized. Um, endless amounts of shit, green tea extract, omega-3 fish oil, curcumin is one of the best uh, anti-inflammatories that blocks uh, inflammatory COX-2 pathways in 12 different ways. It blocks cancer in like 12 different ways, and it increases activity of the P53 gene, mm -hmm. which hunts out cells that are about to turn cancerous and initiates apoptosis, destroys them. I take high-dose high vitamin C to prevent heart disease because they without you know i have a video on that as well but you can prevent high um with high dosages of vitamin c throughout the day it keeps the artery walls intact and cholesterol isn't actually the problem it's the secondary thing when you don't have enough vitamin c but yeah there, basically if you google ray kurzweil supplement regimen uh that goes into how to yeah people are like oh 100 pills a day i want to be taking a lot more actually <laughs> because 
it's all it's all optimized. I'm, I'm just like a hyper analytical optimizer. So I optimize the dating game. I'm a, I was a former systems engineer on nuclear missile defense for Lockheed Martin. I have a computer science and philosophy double bachelor's and a double master's in human computer interaction and philosophy of cognitive science. So when I used to play pro poker, compete in chess tournaments, anything that has an optimization component for a system, like with health and longevity, you get to prevent disease and live longer. So that's I'm going to start a health comp- health and longevity company soon. Is there, uh, is there other things just to kind of get back on track? Is there other things that you've done to uh, boost uh, oh, yeah. SMV and looks max? Um, I didn't get tattoos to looks max, looks max, but I got full arm sleeves, actually a full Phoenix on this arm here. And then what kind of reactions have you got from girls as a result of your tattoos? Oh, they love it. They get complimented on it. Yeah, right stop. And they approach me sometimes. I have the photorealistic Odin, father of Thor. That's our dog's name is Thor, the Raven. And then the hammer of Thor which is the most powerful weapon in mythology. And I'm going to finish the other side of this arm at the end of January with more uh, Norwegian shit. But yeah, I think it, I didn't do it to Peacock or to boost SMB or any of that shit. I kind of always wanted to get full arm sleeves and my arms were like too skinny until recently. <laughs> uh-huh. um, what else? Um, just like simple accessory shit. Rolex watch. Uh, I have, I wear these, three bracelets every day. I wear good colognes. I changed my hairstyle from spiked up to the side. Oh. I got a lot better feedback on that. Um, what else? I keep the the beard. If you look at like the Maxim, like top 100, like sexiest actors and stuff, it's like all guys with like scruff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's consistent. Yeah. We have the same beard style pretty much. Yep. I just want to make it fuller. One, one thing, actually, this is kind of interesting. That came to mind. Uh, if you guys take like a front on selfie with good lighting and then run it through face app and then look at the before after you can like try to adjust yourself to look like the after. Have you ever thought about that? No, I, I don't get how, how, what do you mean? Adjust like yourself. You, take, you just take like a picture of yourself, a selfie okay. and then you with a lot with good lighting and then you run it through face app Hollywood too. And then you can look at the before after of what it did to enhance your aesthetics. And for me, it like makes my beard more full and a little darker. There's like, there's like these little things. That's why I'm taking an oxidil and stuff like that. It's basically like a prescription for like, here's how you can look more aesthetically attractive. And again, oh. I've, been, I've been banging hot chicks for over a decade. Like, and I have endless infield proof of that endless pictures with girls and, and bedroom hookup situations, endless and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more so than anybody else. And I, I kind of purposely didn't really try to max my SMV. I wanted to max the game component and, and whatever, like minimize whatever role SMV was playing, almost like fucking training martial arts with like weights in your hands and then take the weights off. Plus moving to Brazil, there's like a much higher ratio of hot girls and the chicks, you know, they like American. So now, now like, I guess I've geo maxed and I've added in the SMV maximizations, but I did all the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears to be able to get nine, five level girls with, perfecting my game and then perfecting my, my cold approach, how I run my dates, what I'm doing at every step of the way. And now that I've cranked up SMV and have Brazil where there's just tons of hot girls everywhere, it's, you know, it's, it's like full. I, I like, I like sit back and marvel at <laughs> my lifestyle out of here now. Sometimes where it's just, I just have like the best rotation I've ever had by far. And everything's just like full easy mode. I've got like 14 girls on the side, like most are above a nine. And there's just different hot girls here all day long, and it, and I have the relationship with the the main one. But cool, uh, cool. yeah. Let me let me run the guys through some of the things that I've done, and a lot of this stuff is stuff that you guys know. So, uh, putting on muscle, going from 135 pounds or 130 pounds to 170 something pounds, uh, pretty much all muscle. Uh, that was a big one, uh, and that was partially because of TRT and HGH that definitely helped, but also diet, uh, working out. I'm very strict. Uh, food regimen. So I uh, have a uh, private chef meal prep company. So all my meals are prepped. There's no guesswork. I know exactly. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, I have the same. This and this, I hit all my goals. Everything's set up. There's no guessing. There's no shopping. There's no cleaning. Yeah. Uh, fix it. Fixing, working on my hair, my hair loss. That's one I've been tackling a lot lately with Medoxidil, Salt Palmetto, 
the exosomes. So if that doesn't work, I'll probably do a hair transplant. Although I think it's kind of looking better. Just do the hair, tra the hair transplants. So it's cheap enough in Turkey or Brazil. It has nothing to do with the money aspect at all. It's not. It's not. I can afford it like without problem. It's not the money. It's just that uh, one. I really want to make a video on exosomes because there's not a single video about exosomes for hair before and after. So I think it would be a very interesting video. Uh, two, it's a more holistic way to do it. I'm kind of weary of operations, even though that's a very minor one. Um, so yeah, if it doesn't work, I'll do it. But I think my hair is not too bad. Uh, three, the facial hair game, my facial hair on point. So I think a lot of guys, what they do, the mistake they make is they cut their beard too low. Uh, so what I did was I actually let it uh, grow out higher. And that looks much better when you uh, make the line higher. I think a lot of guys make this mistake, including me. You, then you make the mustache, you make it a little shorter because you, you're tempted, like, especially if you're whatever Eastern European, you're just, it just grows out like crazy. So you just cut it down, <laughs> you clean up here, uh, you clean out, you get rid of the neck hair. Oh, uh, go ahead. I got one more. Um, <laughs> I just started doing laser hair removal. Oh, and for the record, I should fucking bring my chick up here. She like pushed all this. Like, she's like, your hair would look better like this. Like, she's like, you would look a lot better with muscles. Like, um, let's get you a trainer. Like, um, and she goes to these like beauty clinics and shit like that. And she's like, oh, talk to this woman about Botox. So, so I like a lot of this is to her credit. Um, but the laser hair removal, it's for down here. It's eight sessions and it's, um, it's one session a month. And so what you do is I actually have another one coming up in two days. It's going to be the fourth session. But you like shave down as much as you can because it like it's like less pain if there's like no hair there. So I did it for the neck and then literally all the way down, uh, like not on my not on my legs, only like on the inner thighs. But it's like my whole chest, mm. my whole stomach, my whole back, and my pubes. When I can't do your fucking ball hair because like risk of infection. <laughs> but, but it's like it's coming. It's growing. Like after three sessions now, it like hardly grows anymore. And after eight sessions, it's going to be like, yeah, I heard about that. You just, then you just do it like once a year. So I won't have to shave my fucking neckline and, and beard down here. And you, you look more defined and muscular when your chest and, and stomach is shaved. I'm not going to fucking shave my armpits or shave my legs. Or anything. I think that looks fucking kind of weird, kind of gay. Yeah, I'm, I might do the laser stuff. I've been thinking about it at some point. I think the next for me, though, is once I'm done with the exosomes and doing the teeth whitening, um but yeah also getting a dog even though i didn't get my dog for um for smv reasons it definitely uh played a little bit of a role but i got i got another one actually um mm. i hired a stylist so i hired one in poland and then it kind of sucked because they they that they kicked ass and i got like really awesome shit i was getting tons of compliments basically just someone that's like good at helping like what will look good on you with your input and feedback and um then when i actually went for the alcohol rehab mm -hmm. i thought i was gonna come back to poland but i didn't but i like left all the clothes there but now i just hired another one in brazil and we've been working on a whole bunch of shit so um based on like your skin tone they do these like different tests and shit and based on your skin tone and, and um your eye color there's like a certain palette of colors that look the best and, and it's very obvious i didn't even know about all this shit the woman explained all this stuff so now when i go out for clothes shopping i like match the, the colors that look the best, like contrasting to my skin tone and eyes. And also she's helping with like styles for sunglasses, for watches, for accessories, for different clothing styles, et cetera. So we're going through all that process right now. Uh -huh. So that's, that's another thing you guys can do. Again, is, this is like fucking, you know, I, I look at this stuff as mostly the icing on the cake, but as long as you're not super skinny or super fat, and you're, you're adhering to basic hygiene and, and, and keeping your hair in line and stuff like that. These other things are going to help, but, you know, the game still is, is the number one. But you could do all this shit, and if you don't have game, it's going to be – you're going to be fucked. Like, I get I get really good-looking guys over the past 10 years that come to my program as well that are in single-digit lay count. This happens all the time. And, and the black people would say, oh, no, you're lying. I think I'm going to bring some of those guys on my channel. And, and what I've gathered from most of their stories – is they do a little bit better in the very beginning of the interaction. The chick is like her interest is a little more peaked, but they quickly fuck it up. Right? Yeah, so, so they, that's, that's that's exactly what happens. So the chicks will kind of almost <laughs> either approach or hover around those guys uh, if we're talking about really good looking guys. And uh, the chick is interested up until the point where the guy starts talking, and then they do fuck <laughs> it up. So they do have a lot of initial interest right off the bat. They just don't capitalize yep. on it. Yeah, and, and, and I, I just, just like. 
let me just yeah. get this part. So typically they bang chicks, the really good looking guys with no game. They bang the chicks who are super DTF and who yeah. just want to do the work for them. So the chicks yeah. are like, so don't you want to invite me somewhere? Mm, maybe your place. That's, <laughs> that's when they get laid. Uh, when it's like super easy, but those layups, they're, they're the minority of the time, but not the majority. Like, he, of the time. like he's like retarded. Hey, don't you want to take me home? <laughs> no, but uh, like the kind of shit that those guys will do, and it's not like every good looking guy does this, but like a lot of them that come to me, they'll like go on like dates that are like three, four hours, and they have no idea how to sexualize and no idea how to bring the girl back home, or they show me their text messages and it's just atrocious. Just because you're good looking doesn't mean you know how to text. Or like even their Tinder profiles aren't, aren't that good. They'll use average shitty pictures, you know, like, and, and, or they, they get the girl back home from the date by some miracle sometimes, and they have no idea what to do with the house. And they just sit there and it's awkward and their conversations falling flat. And he, I could just go on and on and on just because you have good look. But, but they say that like, yeah, everyone thinks I bang tons of chicks. My friends all think that I get laid like crazy because I'm so good looking and this and that. But they're like, dude, I don't know what the fuck to do throughout the process. And, just because they're gonna, like they said, they say that I like, get more interest in the very beginning, but that's about it, right? So that's why it's important. In, in on the other side of the token, I get guys all the time that are average. Most guys are average by definition, and very quickly when they're doing the right things in the game, aka texting the right stuff, saying the right stuff, and cold approach, moving the interaction forward properly, sexualizing properly, seating things for the girl to come back home, knowing how to answer objections for the girl to come home or to meet up for a date or to go home with you from a date, all this stuff that no one talks about that actually matters um, without that stuff, or I should say, once I plug them into that stuff, then they start getting laid very quickly. And then like one of my favorite examples I'll tell really, really quick is we had a guy that he had been trying to do games since he was 18. He was 28 when he came to me, he was still a virgin. He had taken two programs with RSD, one with Todd V, one with natural lifestyles and one other, I think maybe Valentino Cohen. Nobody got him laid. He was barely even getting any dates. Very skeptical to sign up with me. He's like, everyone promised me they'd fix this. No one did. And finally, you know, I was like, I went through the whole process. And he's like, all right, I'll take a chance, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I don't have any hopes here. I've already wasted tens of thousands of dollars. He got laid on day four. And then he had seven dates set up for week two. I remember because there's more dates than I had because I'm repeating a lot of the same girls. And then he went on his first date with an eight plus on week five. And he fucked it up massively. And he got a make out, but he like, fuck, you know, he, he was like skittish and like trying to play it, play it different because she was out of his league. He thought and this and that. That was a and quick I, side note. Anytime you're trying to play it different, you fucked up. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like that's totally normal. You can't be icy cool around a girl that's, you know, quality you're not used to. But keep in mind, you didn't know what a vagina felt like five weeks ago. But he finished the the program in eight weeks with eight different closes. One of the weeks he had three, but on average he got one close a week. And it was, what was fascinating to me, but I've done this time and time again, but he, you know, the, everyone failed him in 10 years of studying the game. And then you plug him into a, basically like, but, but to be fair, like I have stuff so kind of streamlined now, all we had to do for him was he got a pro photo shoot. We had the girls pick the top five. We applied the aesthetic upgrades. He started getting matches. He plugged into my online scripts, got phone numbers, plugged into my tech scripts, had girls coming straight to the house. It's not that hard to close at the house when I show him the game plan of here's how you close at the house. And then as an added kind of unexpected consequence, um, he had watched my 30 minutes of like, here's how you hit the G spot and all the major positions. He had watched that a couple of times and he got feedback on the first time he ever had sex in his whole life that this was like by far the best sex the girls ever had. And she didn't know people could be that good in bed. Cause he was basically like fucking like plugged into my optimized version of it, how to fuck. So that shows you don't need months and years of practice. You don't for the game. You don't need months and years of practice for fucking either. And once you know how to do it properly, AKA texting the right things, messaging the right stuff online, having a rock star profile. And we got him good at cold approach too. But like just that path was how he got his first lay. All he had to do is get the pro photo shoot. And then a girl showed up at his house. That's the power of what, what real game can do. Moving the girl through the fucking process. He was leveraging the exact text that I'm using personally after banging 1437 girls, having over 14,000 phone numbers. So he was texting my level out of the gate. That's how, that's why training with guys like us is so powerful because they're plugging into the end result of all our optimizations and then they get to reap the benefits of that. So let's, let's take some questions. We got so many building up. 
Uh, any thoughts on PE? So uh, he means penis enlargement, like hanging, pumpkin, clamping, jelking, uh, sort of relevant ish. I've honestly never tried any form of penis enhancement. Uh, do, do you know anything about this, John? I don't know. I've heard mixed shit. I've never tried it either, but like, I know a lot of there's like a lot of internet marketer scammers that push this shit. Like my one friend, wow. he had a friend that was that had a product for this, and they stopped him. He was from another country, and they stopped him in the U.S. and questioned him for hours. And he had to explain all the BS science behind it. So I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I, 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 that's my answer as well. I really don't know. Um, I haven't done enough research at it. I haven't tried it. Sterling Cooper, who I like, he says he has a program that makes it like two inches bigger. I don't know. Never tried it. Uh, I don't know. The bigger, bigger isn't always better either. So like the, the length that I have now, like girls are con like very consistently saying like, oh, it's the perfect size. If it's too big, then you're like hitting the back wall, especially in like doggy style. You're hitting the back wall. But I'm assuming like, the guys who are thinking about this have small dicks. So they're not like the guys with like the yeah. average or the above average. It's like the guys. Yeah. Are, but if you're, if you're like completely filling up her pussy, like with your dick, and like all the way to the back and then you add more, if that's even possible. You're going to be like hurting girl, and it's and then you can't even like thrust all the way in. I mean, the vagina is very malleable. It's always bitch it just, about about that. Just really well, like a girl can adjust to a five inch dick and a like a nine inch dick. Um, I do agree that sometimes there's too big, but anyway, are you afraid TRT can accelerate hair loss? Um, yeah, a little bit, but I take Supplemento, which. Uh, so what happens, it's not the testosterone that causes the hair loss. It's the uh, DHT. Uh, yeah. And so testosterone converts into DHT. So sulfamedo, that's, that's why finasteride is effective because uh, finasteride, what it does is it prevents that conversion. But uh, finasteride also has a bunch of other side effects. Sulfamedo is a natural version of that. So it minimizes that conversion into DHT. Uh, and as a result of that, you know, you get a lot less of the hair loss benefits. Um, I mean, the hair loss, you know, effects. So I am and I'm not, you know, I don't know. Has that been your concern, John? Um, a little bit. Uh, that's why I stopped taking the finasteride. I don't want to fucking, um, what's it called? Um, block the DHT stuff. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't really give a fuck. Like TRT has so many other, like there's longevity benefits to TRT. All TRT is doing, it's like we weren't, we weren't genetically programmed to live much past 30. And we've kind of like fucked with that by by having all these different therapies and enhancements and this and that with health. And so that's why testosterone is like falling off a cliff. Like we're not meant to uh, like be in our prime and like that. Excuse me. So um, if your testosterone levels are low, let's look at the alternative. If your testosterone levels are low, you're going to have increased uh, body fat, decreased muscle mass. Uh, higher voice, like Todd yeah, decreased V. energy, decreased libido, decreased yep. drive, decreased motivation. decreased confidence, and you live you live less. It's like, why not be back where you were in your twenties, which is how we are programmed as a biological machine to operate. You know what's yeah. funny though for me, like uh, I got it on TRT when I was I think twenty eight. I was already pretty, you know, like I was already doing quite good with chicks. So for me, I don't feel like it increased my confidence. I do think it made my voice deeper. I do think it gave me more muscle. And I do think it probably gave me a little bit more energy. But I didn't feel like it made me more confident with chicks. But what, what I did notice is that I think it made me a little less anxious. Like this kind of like baseline anxiety that I've had for like a year or two, just kind of just quieted down, like just turned a knob on that. <laughs> so that's kind of been my experience. Are there than, any other confounding factors that, that could have been responsible for that besides TRT? What do you mean? Like, do you, like, were there any things that you did concurrently with TRT that could have calmed you down that, that might not have been TRT? No, it was like, it was like literally a few days after I started TRT. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was a nine day difference. Yeah. Like I felt it like I was just like a lot more calm. Others smoke grass. <laughs> Do you think? Well, okay. So I'm gonna let you answer this question while I take a piss. Hang on a second. Do you think being in a long term relationship helps or hinders your game? I have a, a video exactly addressing this topic. I do not believe in the concept of rustiness, and it's not just theoretical. Again, I've taken long hiatuses, which I and, and I now regret because it, my late confidence should be much higher. But I've always mostly prioritize rotation girls anyways. So if I was just ma if I was just trying to like max out quantity, it would, it, I'd probably be over 2K right now. Um, but let's see. I don't think the reason why I don't believe in rustiness is this is a skill game. Okay. So if you guys became chess grandmaster level 
and then you didn't play chess for a year or two years, you wouldn't be rusty coming back. Yes, sir, I read like 30 neuroscience books. I'm pretty well versed in how the brain works. And stuff in your brain, like the pathways function like a riverbank. So it's like building up sediment. It's a function of frequency and recency to, to make the pathway more strong. So, you know, there, you, you still know the correct moves. Okay. That it's, it's going to be, you're going to be reactivating those pathways that haven't been used as much, but it's not, it's not like you're going to be like fucking up. Like you still know what to do. You still know what to text. You still know what to say. You still know how to move the interaction forward. And you're still interacting anyways with people all the time, right? Even if you're like quote unquote out of the game, you're still interacting with people. You're still flirting with girls, I presume. So I've always like came back when I've taken breaks from, from game, I've always came back hitting it just as hard as I always had. And even if there's like a slight disadvantage, which I, which I presume there is just based on the neurological buildup of that riverbank, it's not advantageous to think that you're at a disadvantage because then that's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you think, oh, I'm, I'm back out of a relationship. I'm going to be rusty. Uh, here I go. Uh, well, she's not going to like me. I'm rusty. Oh, what a surprise. She doesn't like you. So I'm really big on always thinking you're at 100 out of 100. And, and that applied when I was skinny. That applied when my hairline was receding. You always need to look at yourself at 100 out of 100. That doesn't mean you're at the maximal version of yourself. It's You're always a work in progress. You always want to be trying to improve both the sexual market value and what you bring to the table as a man to present the best version of yourself possible. So always try to be, to be bettering yourself in a tangible sense, not in a fucking bullshit self-help mental masturbation sense. But that being said, it's there's literally no advantage to thinking of yourself as less than 100 out of 100. I think Andrew Tate says that there's no disadvantage to thinking that you're like the greatest man. That's like that's like extreme megalomania. I have megalomania, but it's not on that level. I think on that level it becomes, you know, there's some downsides. But you want to when you roll up to a girl, you want to assume you already got her. Like I always tell guys, the purpose of a cold approach is not to win the girl over. It's not to gain points. It's not to avoid losing points. It's not to keep the interaction going. You assume you already got her. Like it's a foregone conclusion. Like there's no way you could not you could not get her. That doesn't mean you'll get every girl, but that's the best mindset. That's going to make all your body language and verbals fall directly into place. So, uh, how are you I, able? I want to ask you this question: How are you? I don't able, believe in rust. How do you? How do? How are you able to convince yourself that? Because I think what a lot of guys are going to struggle with is like that's empirical support, empirical evidence of of having banged lots of nine fives. Sure, uh, sure, I get that. But like, let's say if you don't have those, uh, like, let's say you're a guy who's I don't know been with like five chicks. Like, if you don't have you, that, it builds quickly. It snowballs. So like in the very beginning, you just have to trust that like the person's system that you're following, which, which nine nine times of a hundred is going to be a bad move. But you just have to trust that it works. But like all my stuff's based on data and science, and we line up on tons of stuff. So when you're following a proven system, the results will come. No, it, it's very even I, I even get guys in wheelchairs late. I got a guy two out of three, two out of the three nights came to me as a, a virgin in a wheelchair, with cerebral palsy. Two out of the three nights he pulled. It's very rare that like I get a guy that I can't help. It's, there's there's been like there's been some, but it's it's extreme circumstances. Um, there's like a guy that was that was like all deformed and shit. And I'm like, dude, that's gonna be fucking rough. And it was. <clears throat> he was like trying to blame my my training, <clears throat> but he was like literally deformed, like an accident. Um, yeah, it's super yeah. tough. But without those, you know, barring those extreme circumstances, um, you you can do this. And like believing you can do it is like a big part of the battle. And then having the proper strategy is the next big piece you need. And then the results will start coming very quick. Look at that fucking virgin. He tried everything, 10 years, tens of thousands of dollars, RSD program. He could have taken 50 more RSD programs. That wouldn't have fucking helped at all. And then he got a real pro solution, a real system, loses Virginia on day four. That gave him confidence to get more closes and then on week five he's out with an eight so this process can snowball very fucking quick it's not like okay i mean in a few years i'm gonna go out with an eight now because i'm catching up no he, he's closing one a week he's out with a, a fucking hot girl in week five fucking it up but give him another month and he's gonna be getting girls down in rotation so mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't believe in rustiness and what was the what was the other follow-up question you said <laughs> me or him this guy's profile name uh oh yeah i'm surprised i put that up on the screen uh, i didn't <laughs> read that do you think yeah anyway let, let's move on to the next question speaking of ours <laughs> are, you, are you down to take like a question this guy's like i sort of a hater but 
uh, I think he he's asking like somewhat of an interesting question. Uh, he's asking, <laughs> why haven't you acknowledged that you learned from Jeffy? Is it because you hate RSD? You were doing uh, MM, I'm assuming stands for mystery method until you join RSD. So it's no coincidence. Oscar is a way more common RSD natural game over MM. All right. So do you want to kind of uh, set the record on that? Learn from Jeff. So me and Jeffy were friends. So like, um, I've never made a video bashing Jeffy because he, despite being part of a massive scam operation, being friends with massive fucking pieces of shit and scammers, he at least keeps it real in the sense that he doesn't lie about results. He's he's open about the fact that he <laughs> bangs war pigs and, and trolls and stuff like that and enjoys it. Um, you know, he also bangs attractive chicks now and then. Um, I will acknowledge that that he did help me. So I, I'll, let's see. I'll say this was October 2012. I was at 130 Lake Count. I was co-instructing a boot camp with him in New York City. And we, there was two students. <laughs> one, one of them actually ended up becoming Chris Parker, who's not really any of a name. But that was Jeffy's student. He didn't get laid at all in the program. I had this Australian guy who was a four Lake Count. I got him laid night one, got him laid night two. So he increased his Lake Count 50% in the first two days. This was October 2012. My shit was already fired then, 10 years ago. And that's why I'm always fucking bitching all these coaches. Like no one on the on the scene is even holding a candle to that shit from 10 years ago. And um, the third night I ended up pulling a girl. I was just an assistant, so I had the right to do that. And and he stuck in too long on a set that where the girl had a boyfriend and he didn't screen for logistics soon enough. But it was on that program that Jeffy actually really helped me uh, get past the sexualization. I was still leaving like a gap a little bit in space between when I'd be running interactions. And he was like, no, get closer and this and that and like be physical. And, and I saw the interaction turn around and that was like a big turning point. And I've, been, I've acknowledged that I have I posted my old field reports. and I walked through that whole if you guys search like field report once modern life dating was like he's fake and this and that. And I was like, no, I have thousands of pictures, of hookup situations. I have hundreds of hours of infield. I have endless people vouching for me. I released my old field reports going from about Lake count 100 because I started the, the blog when I hit 100. It was called Pick Up Beyond 100. It's pickupbeyond100.blogspot.com if you guys want to take a look at that. Pick Up Beyond 100, the word or the, the number 100, pickupbeyond100.blogspot.com that has chronicling going from 100 or so until about 150 when I was when I moved to Vegas. And I acknowledge in there there's a really long post that I wrote on the plane ride after that New York program. Um, about how Jeffy helped me get through that. But um, RSC overall was incredibly detrimental to the community and, and whoever who are Kumar. Um, more in common with RSC's natural game, that's absolutely false. It's mystery method was the huge was the basis, the compliance model. I think I have more in common with RSC's natural game than John does for sure. Um John and I have a lot in common, but I would say in terms of who has more in common with RSD's natural game, I would say it's probably more me than you, if anything. Yeah. I, mean, kind of yeah, I think most of RSD stuff is trash. I don't I don't think there is really much of any good. I thought the only that. so here's my here's Jul my Julian. Julian outer game to some extent. I would I would I thought Ju okay, so I thought Julian his outer game was all right. I thought his inner game was actually when he in, in the first product, the pimp, not the other products, when he just got, uh, described the uh what's it called, the four fundamentals, the four pillars of inner game, I thought he nailed it pretty well. There's one thing that I thought he was missing, which is dominance. But aside from that, I thought he nailed it. Um, Jeff, yeah, one other one other quick thing with Jeffy too that I will acknowledge is he. I so I paid RST in like 2012 for like a hundred. It was like a hundred dollars for like an hour coaching call, and it was with Jeff because I remember on the forums like he like him and I were like driving on the RST Nation forums, <clears throat> and and he and he was like he taught me some of the fundamentals of like lead working. He's like you got to run volume. Um, you need to like make them put up or shut up. I get to the Mimi real quick, this and that. Like he taught me some of the core things there with, with lead working that I, that I do acknowledge leads eroding over time, some of that stuff. But I think I, I took it to, to really far new heights um, and, and really evolved it massively. But, but yeah, I do credit him for introducing me to some of those concepts. Lord. Um, are you familiar with who I am Skippy is? Mm, no. 
He's like he's like this massive loser. He's a 43 year old virgin. He wears t shirts that say "proud virgin." He's super religious. He's like a Mormon, and he's super creepy. So there's videos of him actually like, <laughs> like chatting up girls, and it's like the creepiest, cringiest shit you will ever see. It's so fucking creepy and cringy, bro. Uh, <laughs> like he will he will show up to a girl's house that I guess he's texting. He'll be like, "Hey." I got us ice cream. She's like, oh, you didn't tell me you were coming. She's like, he's like, yeah, I want to show up. You weren't answering my texts. Here I am texting all day asking you, do you like me? And then you don't text me back. So I show up <laughs> with my ice cream. And this chick is like, <laughs> Wait, so, he, he's putting this stuff on YouTube? Yeah. So I, oh, think, I, should react, I should react to this. You should, yeah. So I think I am Skippy is an extreme circumstance. Uh, he's 43 years old. He's ugly as well, fuck. Dude. He's creepy as fuck. He's religious. For anyone that uh, anyone that's Mormon, they just need to watch like some South Park episodes, which which satirically like explain the whole religion. With I know well, they're they're not going to watch that. They think like South Park is like like like, like a like a quick twenty second maybe explanation is the guy Joseph Smith said that he fucking got these plates that that told him like how everything should be run, and they were they were no like, one else yeah, could see them. They're like written by an angel, yeah, or, or yeah, and only only he could see them. And then um, <laughs> then what happened? People like called him out. And they're like, oh, like they basically like took they took like the plates that he wrote, and they're like, okay, like if you were divinely inspired, like do it again. And he like wrote it all different, and he said like God told him to write it different or something. So like obviously a guy making shit up, and 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 in the background with South Park, they're like dumb, 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 dumb. Yeah, but yeah, that was a good. I saw that musical on Broadway, the the Book of Mormon. All right, cool. Uh, let's go through. Sorry to any of you Mormon fans out there, but. You gotta do some research. Top tier dating cultures. Well, okay, why the top tier dating culture is close to six feet or higher doesn't help seeing that when you're uh, five four. All right, so I can answer that question. It's the same thing as asking why. How tall are you? I'm five eleven. Uh, so not quite, but my old business partner was five nine. He got into like three hundred Lake County before he got married. My old business partner. Oh, okay. Josh. I mean, Austin is like five ten. But yeah, there's there's no I haven't seen any dating coaches who are like five four or five five. So I will answer that question. It's the this same reason. Retired Justin Mark. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> no comment. Yeah. But uh, I will say this: well, it's the same reason why most CEOs of Fortune five hundred companies are over six feet, because when you're tall, you do get an advantage. But it doesn't mean that as a shorter guy. So you are. It's just how you look at statistics. If you look at it from the perspective of like, oh, you know, here is this category, let's say CEOs or dating coaches, and most of them are tall. That means that, you know, only tall people can become, right? No, it is easier if you're taller, but as a shorter guy, you can't change that. So you might as well try to become okay. a dating coach. Yeah. If you look at Jeffy, for example, he's like 5'6". He's a pretty short guy. I think he's 5'6", five, 5'7", five, right? Jeffy's on the shorter side, I believe. Let me, let me let me make a general point here. So, like anyone that's watching this that's short, and you think like, okay, I can't get laid because I'm short, or you're Indian or you're Asian, and you think you can't get laid in Western culture because you're Indian or Asian, or you're like in your 40s or your 50s, and you think you can't get laid because you're too old. Okay, and this this applies to like all these different things, right? Yes, those things play a factor, but also yes, there's fuck tons of other girls that won't care. So like. Say a girl has a problem with your height. Who cares? There's tons more that don't. Okay. Do you have the same advantages as me being six foot four? No. Who fucking cares? There's still tons of other girls that will bang you that, that don't care about height. There's tons of girls that prefer guys that are in their 40s and 50s. These are all just stupid excuses. And, and my, my favorite one is when guys blame the city. And guys will blame cities of like a million people. They'd be like, it's because I'm in San Francisco or it's because I'm in this city and, it, and it, the, the girls here are terrible. Unless you're in a farm town, if you have game, you can get laid anywhere. Put me in any city, 50K, 100K, I'll get laid like crazy. It doesn't matter. I mean, certain cities are a lot easier than others. We, we do got to admit that. But, yeah, I see your point. But, but the thing is, is, like, guys would rather – and it comes in all shapes and sizes. I get guys – I've been doing this over 10 years. I've taught a lot of live programs. Oh, hey, man, my hairline's receding. And, and, and when I'm in interactions, they don't like me because of my hairline. I'm like, here's what's really happening. In interactions, you're fucking self-destructing because you're worried about your hairline. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. And yeah. once in a while, they'll give a fuck, but who cares? There's tons of other girls that won't give a fuck. And it, it, like your own mindset about your own worth is like literally the cornerstone. 
So like, if you think that you're not good enough because you're Indian or because you're short or because you're fucking hairline or because you're because you're in your forties or fifties, you're fucked. And it's not because of those things. It's fucked because you think that the, you think those things are fucking you over. It becomes completely self fulfilling. You walk up and you're in the, in the whole time he's thinking, oh, she's thinking my hairline, she's thinking my hair. He's not thinking I'm gonna bang this girl for sure, which is how he should be thinking. Yeah, fair enough. Do you guys agree with Mark Manson to look smacks against your ethnic stereotype is useful? I.e., he recommends black men should wear glasses to look smarter or Asians should get uh, tats to look less nerdy. That's an interesting uh, – I've, I've never heard of that, but that's interesting. And I, it sounds like it makes sense. Uh, I probably – especially with the Asians to uh, – Recommending that someone should get tattoos is pretty fucking hardcore. <laughs> um, he, has, like, he has like popular books out. Yeah, I would. I would probably. I would probably agree with that. On first I wouldn't. Time. Well, I don't know. Like, the thing is, these, these things are like he's he's toting these things as like magic bullets. That's the other fucking. No, no, no. I don't think he's saying it's magic bullets. I just think he's saying like that's like one strategy is to look smacks against your ethnic stereotype. I don't know. The the thing is, is like you can look smacks all day, and like we've covered n- numerous times, if you're not comfortable in your own skin, if you're not acting like the fucking man, if you're not. Um, if you don't have solid fundamentals of game, you're fucked anyways. Okay. So you need to believe you're good enough and you need to be comfortable. I, t- I tell my, I'll tell my clients, I say, write down all this shit that, that you bring to the table that makes you unique, right? What skills you have, what hobbies you have, what interests you have, what cool experiences you have. Everyone has tons of cool shit, but they get focused on the fucking ethnicity and the fucking height and there's all these trash retards like wheat waffles who you just debated reinforcing that or planting it in their head in the first place like that stupid professor waffle guy that shot up uh people in england it was like england's biggest mass shooting in the past 10 years and he was a fan of wheat waffles he i read through his posts on reddit just for the purpose of research for that video i had my assistant collected i read that stuff he's like i never was worried about my looks at all until i started reading all this shit. And then it, it deflated his confidence. It made him feel horrible about himself. And it made his life hell. And then he fucking went and did something crazy. And there's tons of guys out there that also fall down that unfortunate path. Or you have total fucking losers like Rolo Tomasi and these other red pill guys that I've showed are dating ugly girls and that have no game at all. And they're like, women are the enemy. Women are all going to cheat on you. No one that gets girls talks like that. Me and Tristan Taylor were talking about it. No one that gets a lot of girls hates women. No one, no one that has game hates women. It's it's literally just the opposite. So it's it's just guys that suck with girls and that are rationalizing it as it being their looks and rationalizing it as being women as the enemy, and then mass poisoning everyone's mindsets so that they fall down those same beliefs and will fall into the cults of these guys' followings. And then we'll come on chats like ours and radically defend the, the looks max, you know, black pill and red pill. And tell us that we're fucking stupid, even though it, it's not even a debate. It's it's literally here's all the evidence on our side and facts. And then you have a bunch of like naysayers and stuff like that that are just gonna like literally just be like, Hey, you're a poopy head. Like, do I care that wheat waffles has rated me a two? Uh, I showed his um <laughs> I showed his face because I wanted the internet to see this guy here that's inflicting tons of pain and suffering on men is a little 19-year-old kid in England. Okay, people, people probably thought he was like in his 40s. Or like, let's, you know, let's, <laughs> I feel like we're going on an extreme side tangent back to Weed Waffles. Um, I want to like get through some of these questions. What are the top two personality traits that hold men back from a game perspective? I'm curious your take on that. Um, being unsure of yourself. Like um, lack of confidence, basically. Yeah. Well, like, remember, remember I said, like, most guys are trying to gain points. Most guys are trying to not uh-huh. lose points. Uh-huh. So, like, when you're unsure of yourself and you're not sure if what you're saying is good enough or if you're good enough, that's when you start micromanaging everything and you just go into, like, analysis mode in the conversation. Uh-huh. It's like, why can guys talk to their friends and their dad, no problem, but they freeze up or stall out when they're talking to a woman? Because when they're talking to a woman, they make it a huge fucking deal. And they're like, is she going to like this joke? How do I be the impressive guy? How do I keep this going? How do I not fuck up? Is she, does she like me yet? How am I doing so far? And, and all that fucking nonsense thinking paralyzes them. 
and then they're fucked. And so that needs to stop. <clears throat> that's a that's a big problem is is being unsure of yourself. Being make the decision right now. You're good enough. You're, you're good enough to get the girl. Learn the learn the fucking proper game, so you don't say dumb shit like RST taught you. And what would you say is another one? I would say one big one is being afraid or being a pussy. So guys who are scared of confrontation, scared of rejection, scared of this, scared of that, um, just have too much having too much fear. That's one. Uh, the other one I would say is a lack of belief in yourself. Um, yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's basically what yeah. I said. I'm sure. I'm sure of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's huge. Because it, it, like I said, it's the cornerstone. If you think you're not good enough for your hairline, your ethnicity, your height, whatever, you're fucked because that's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You go in literally handicapped. It's like, uh, oh, oh, let me give a really quick analogy. Uh -huh. I, I always say this on my channel. If you went into a car dealership and the car salesman said, hey, we have this car over here. The parts are all fucking broken and the windows are busted out and it's all rusting. And, uh, you know, basically it's a piece of shit. Do you want to buy it? No one wants to buy that car. That's how you're presenting yourself. Keep keep obsessing about your looks. Keep you know, and I'm not I'm not trying to sound hypocritical because I where this is a podcast about looks, Maxine. <laughs> but at the same time, if you get your game handled and your mindset handled, the SMB stuff can be the icing on the cake. It's still worth talking about because I th still think it's ten to twenty percent, and it can be the icing on the cake. But um, you know, people want the shiny new Lamborghini. That's how you can present yourself when you think, of course, I'm going to get this girl. Why wouldn't I get this girl? And it's literally as simple as just starting to believe that you're awesome. And then, like, literally, girls don't know your lay count. I, I had a client. On, I'll tell more real quick story, and then we'll move on. A uh, client in Vegas that was a virgin. He was an Indian dude. The girls like you because you've been with hundreds of girls, and they, like, they don't like me because I've been with zero. And I said, well, surprise, surprise, we don't have our lay counts on a post-it note on our fucking forehead. So if I roll in weak and like a pussy and unsure of myself, she's going to respond negatively despite having fucked hundreds of girls in the past. The, the game is unforgiving. They don't know your fucking back, your stats, right? And by the same token, if you roll in like the man, ta-da, she's going to respond positively. And then as you start to get more phone numbers, more dates, more closes, hotter girls, more consistency, all that reinforces from a demonstrable, tangible, empirical, objective evidence standpoint that yes, you can get girls, and yes, you can get sevens, and seven fives, and eights, so on and so forth, until it's like fed the beliefs enough with real data. And who cares what everyone else on the internet is saying? I, you know, any fucking hate comments I get every fucking day. You know, you know what it does? There's a brick wall. Not, none of it fucking passes through. That doesn't mean I'm like oblivious to feedback or criticism. It's just I don't derive how, how, the, my worth for myself or how I feel about myself from other people's opinions, and, and neither should you. All right, let's uh let's go for maybe another fifteen minutes and just try to go through these in like rapid fire. Alex, you said you learned a lot about talking to ladies by watching Natural Friend. Do you believe a good coach normally someone struggled with girls before or natural could be too? I think most of the time it is going to be someone who struggled with girls because otherwise they're not going to have the motivation to become a coach. I think a natural does have the potential to become a coach, but it's very very rare because usually they just don't give a fuck. It's not a big struggle for them. So it's kind of like my take on that. Uh, okay, so again, I'm yet to have someone provide a good of confidence. <laughs> watch, the, watch the name there. I think that bothered yeah. you before. Anyone who isn't shy, well, it didn't, didn't, didn't bother me per se. I just don't want to. <laughs> YouTube. Anyone who isn't shy or nervous could technically be perceived as confidence, still waiting for a girl intelligent enough. Okay, so my definition of confidence is basically having belief in yourself that you could accomplish whatever it is that you're doing. So, for example, uh, I'm doing a live stream. I could be confident in the live stream, but I could be not confident when talking to girls. I could be confident doing a presentation in front of, you know, uh, I, I could be confident at work, but I could be not confident at a bar. I could be confident at a bar, but I could be not confident at work. So it's having belief that you could accomplish and you succeed in whatever activity that you're doing. And larger, largely it's based on your uh, previous experience your reference experiences. Do you, have, do you have anything to add to that? Um. Yeah, confidence is 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 being comfortable in your own skin, having a backbone, um, you know, not being afraid to disagree with other people, not being afraid to voice your own opinions, um, not being a pussy, not being soft spoken. Um, 
and yeah, just like like I, I, I think the best way to describe it is it's like a foregone conclusion. Like the like assuming you're gonna get the girl before you go do the approach does wonders for the interaction because no longer are you like, what do I say? What do I do? Is this okay? Is that okay? How do I impress her? You're like, I can say and do whatever the fuck I want, which is exactly how I conduct myself at all times. And people sign up like crazy for my programs. Hey, you're the only one that doesn't seem like you're full of shit. You seem very authentic because I'm not worried about what I'm saying. And it's very freeing for, for in all areas of life. You just say literally anything that, that you want that comes to mind. And people respect that because they see that it's, it's not BS. And almost everyone else is doing the opposite. Fair enough. So, yeah, it ties into authenticity as well. Okay. Um, all right, let's see what else we got. We got a lot of people going back and forth in the comments. <laughs> what is the question? What is the difference between a pretty boy and a person who considers them as real men? Do you have an answer for that? Between a pretty boy, I don't understand. It's between like a, between, between like Justin Bieber or something like no, that. I know, I know, a pretty boy is in a. Per, what's the difference between a pretty boy and a person? And, who and I say? guess what he's asking is like, what, what's the difference between a pretty boy and someone who's a real man? Uh, no, it's a, they're phrasing it really weird. Yeah, and a person who considers. Oh, maybe considers himself as a real man. I don't know. A pretty boy is like dressing more towards the feminine side and not upholding like traditional masculine stereotypes, like frosted tips. <laughs> yeah, I think that plus muscle. Muscle plays a role. You can go from being a pretty boy to being a man just by putting on some muscle and some mass, some facial hair. I think all of those play a role. Uh, question. You walk into a bar and the ugliest duckling approaches you, making clear that she's interested. Would either of you turn her down? I would. I think John would as well. Um, yeah, I, I was, I yeah, 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 I would, I wouldn't talk to a, um, I wouldn't talk to a chick unless she was hot. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, someone wants to see me and wheat waffles in a cage fight. Yeah, I would, I would do that any day of the year. I would even pay to fly him to Brazil. I, <laughs> No question. That kid needs a serious ass beating anyways. What would you guys rate prime Julian cold approach game out of 10 with decimals? That's an interesting question. I'll let you go first and then I'll. <laughs> well, first of all, anyone that's going to make a website called my game is a 10 and then later needing to make a website called my wife is a six. That's that answers the question right there. I, but was, to be fair, that was before. That's that was way after his prime. Julian game. Julian obviously was fronting hard with a huge facade. He he had a coke problem. Yes, I can say that because it's not slander. And you know, uh, he fucking um, look how he crumbled on CNN. I mean, that says it all. That's, uh, anyone that, that wants to know the real Julian, watch how he conduct himself. Where he looked like he was going to cry. Where he looked like a bitch. Where he was stuttering and stammering and, and, and had zero composure and made an absolute fool of himself. Uh, anyone that can be a Julian fan after that has some serious problems. Those, those are all fair points, but let's just focus on the question. His just purely his cold approach during his prime, which was before. No, he- I know, I know, guys that hung around it. It was all just blown way up. It was supposed to be like, oh, Julian's the savior and the, the chosen one. No, it was all fucking shit. He was pulling ugly chicks. He, it was not anywhere near what they purported it to be. Uh, he he was like in the, in like the hundred something lay count. Like it's it was all fucking smoke and mirrors with them. And same with Max. Max's game is trash. He plays video games all day. The girls in his lifestyle videos are all hired. That's not slander either. I got videos about it. He copyright struck one down and it came back after an appeal. These guys are huge fucking clowns. They they just are good at like tricking everyone. Look at Julian's stuff. He's got it's literally the same as a religious cult. People are chanting Father Jay. They're playing dubstep. Yeah, he, he went he went in a weird direction for People sure. People are crowd surfing. This is just a fucking huge loser trying to be cool to a bunch of guys that are also trying to be cool and be part of this. I'll, <laughs> also, this, I'll kind Transformation of Mastery said it was total trash. What'd you say? I will chime in like my perspective on this. This is probably one area where you and I disagree. So I never went out, Julian. Obviously, I've never seen him game infield. I have watched a decent amount of his infield back in the day. And uh, I used to be in the same yoga class as him. So I did interact with him a little bit. 
Uh, my perspective was that if I had to rate his prime cold approach game, I'll probably put it around a 7 out of 10. That's my perspective. Uh, in terms of his personality, he was actually pretty chill and nice, and he was like a cool, normal guy. Uh, for example, Tyler was quite weird in real life, but <laughs> Julian, Julian I found to be pretty no, cool. Julian, I confronted Julian to his face. <clears throat> I, was, I was running a boot camp in San Francisco maybe like three years ago, and he was also running one randomly in San Fran, and, and we ran into each other in a club, and I was like, I think I said, like, why are you such a huge fucking pussy or whatever? And, and, and he was like, oh, I'm not sure who you even are. I'm like, bullshit, motherfucker. Because, like, I, I worked for them and, like, they all, yeah, he, he, I, he had been talking about me in a bunch of different ways. And he, he just, like, crumbled. He's like, I'm not, he's like, I don't, I don't know who you are. I'm like, that's fucking bullshit, dude. Fuck off. He, he was just acting like a huge pussy, just like he was on CNN. Then he marries this girl who looks like she has an upside down face, like the fucking character in Family Guy. <clears throat> Fair enough. Although I would say that if a six foot four guy who's two hundred twenty pounds confronted me at a bar, I probably... he's tall too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's like six two. I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to think how I would handle it. I mean, I definitely wouldn't be a pussy, but I wouldn't engage in a fight either. I'd be like, dude, like, what the fuck? Well, I wasn't trying to fight him. I was trying to talk to him like man to man. And he oh. was like, Ugh. okay, fair enough. Like, but it's like with Todd with his pink beanie. He was like, why are you telling people my game is bad? Like, because it fucking sucks. <laughs> What would, you for. what would you recommend for guys with no friends in college going to bars, clubs alone, or sticking with online campus day game? What's your take on that? Make fr- make friends. Go to a frat party alone and go fucking uh, cheer some dude that looks like he's having a good time and be like, hey, man, let's go hit on chicks and then fucking go hit on chicks with them again in the future. It's that simple. Just because you don't have any friends doesn't mean you need to be like a loner for, for the entire college experience. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, college is largely a uh, big part of college is social circle. So, um, like social, not social circle, but social. Uh, so, yeah, joining, I mean, a, joining a frat that can uh, make a big difference. Yeah, that's more like fake friends. You you can just go out to people that are having fun at parties and just fucking say, "Hey, what's up?" and be friendly, and then become friends. It's uh, yeah, tons it's, of people. It's pretty easy to meet friends in college. Um. Okay. I, love, I love trap parties for game. Me too. Uh, question, your opinion on hitting girls on IG. Do you slide into chicks DMs? No. Mm. I think it's mostly a waste of time. Okay, fair enough. I mean, it is a very low probability. Very low probability. Um, okay, I mean, that really answers. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I I'm mean, not, I, I've done, I've done a big fan of it. Yeah, I've done over, it. yeah, overall, it's a shitty. It's a shitty return. It's, yeah, it's low ROI, unless you're verified or something. Most frats aren't going to let randoms uh, in. Not really true. You can sneak in. Back when I was in college, even when I was out of college, when I was living in California, we used to crash USC frat parties all the time. You just walk in. Uh, a lot of this confidence is just like how you walk in. Are you like, hey, can I come in? Or you just like fucking walk in like you don't give a fuck. Uh, that plays a big role. Uh, you know, we, we used to do shit like we used to like fucking. But, but no, he's talking about. I think he's talking about if it's a fucking closed party or not. There's tons of opens where they have the where it's. Open. Yeah, well, I think what he's talking about is that how like most fraternities, if it's just like a random dude, they don't want them in. They just want to let in random chicks because they want to keep the ratio good. But what I'm saying is, there's ways around that. Like, if you're ballsy, you can get in. Like, I've gone into some like really exclusive parties just by like fucking walking in through the back and i was like i don't give a fuck like what are they gonna do the worst case scenario is they kick me out i don't give a shit but yeah good times maybe i'll start doing that again at some point probably too old for it but dude i think the last fat party i went to was when i lived in vegas 2013 there was an rsd uh fucking fanboy he's like i'm at five lay count for my life and i ended up getting five lays out of that party so i like i pulled a chick um her roommate came to pick up in the morning and her roommate had a boyfriend. I closed her roommate later that day. Her roommate was like a nine plus. And then I converted three of the phone numbers for uh, closes later on. And I was, it doesn't I was get easier than frat parties unless you're a celebrity, in my opinion. That's mm-hmm. like the easiest. Good times. Um, all right. So we've gone for like an hour and a half. We covered looks maxing. We answered questions. Um, good stream. I think we covered a lot of shit. Uh, John, any closing thoughts? Anything you want to mention? Just don't let this uh, looks maxing stuff consume you guys. Like, if you're part of any looks maxing forums, I'd leave them immediately. If you're, if you're, um, you know, part of any of these groups where guys are just trying to raid each other and insult each other and stuff, that's extremely unproductive. Like, imagine like I like went around and I was like, okay, I'm a two, uh, I'm fucked, 
right? Like that easily could have happened. Like had this information hit me like back in the early days. And I would I have banged 1,437 girls? Of course not. I probably would be like hating girls. I'd be like an incel. Vert. You need to look at these paths that it's putting you on. Okay. And you need to realize that it's, it's bullshit trash that the game is all looks or mostly looks. Okay. That, that women just say endless amounts of data that, that says the direct opposite, you know? So it, there's really no debate here in my opinion about how much it matters. So try to optimize what you can in your control but focus on improving your game because that's the large part of the equation. And then just make SMB like the icing on the cake rather than the sole focus. And don't spend all your time obsessing about things that are out of your control, like your ethnicity or your height and thinking that it's over for you, man, as they always say. Those are just fucking sad, scared, little fucking pussy losers. Most of the black pill guys, I've, I've like, as you said, most from out of shape, they're just huge fucking pussies. And, you know, there, there, it's an easy way out. Oh, well, the world hates me because I wasn't born a Chad and so on. Fuck. No, be a fucking man. Man up and learn game and then optimize what you can and go have an amazing sex life. Go have an amazing dating life. And let Wheat Waffles and these other fucking losers call you a two and a one. And you can say, here I am with a whole bunch of hot girls. Okay, I guess this two is living a pretty fucking cool life. You dumb fuck, right? That's why that kid needs his ass beat. He, he, I, I'm, I would venture to say, without slandering him, you gotta be careful now these days, that there's a good chance that he could have incited that fucking shooting. That guy was a follower of his. He was like a tip of the hat, Professor Waffles. And he had no issues with his looks until he started watching Wee Waffles. And then he went down a huge depressive hole. And that's what's happened to a lot of his other guys. I get guys emailing me all the time, dude, you fucking literally saved my life because you showed me that I didn't need to give up. And now I'm actually getting laid. And it's not just, oh, now I have hope. A bunch of these guys are getting late. They're, they're even like laughing their asses off. They're like, I just fucked three chicks last week. And I didn't know I could do that. And they're like, I was, I was planning on not having sex my whole life. And I'm like, yeah, these guys are fucking retards. And they need to be called out. And they need to be fucking called out hard. And they need to be fucking stopped because it's out of control. So... Yeah, I'll just shout out my channel again, uh, John Anthony Lifestyle. If you guys want to see more videos, I got like a thousand videos on there now. So I made daily videos all this year. It's all pretty uh, solid value for free. And if you want to take things to the next level, uh, PlatinumDatingSystem.com, you can get on a free 30-minute call. I have an eight-week mentorship program, as I described with that virgin, where most guys are getting one to two new lays a week, putting about one new rotation girl on per week. They're going to do 50 to 100 girls a year, regardless of starting as a virgin or being out of a long relationship or having little experience or not being a Chad. So you don't need to be a Chad to apply there. PlatinumDatingSystem.com. Did you have any closing thoughts? No, I mean, I think you said it pretty well. Um, yeah, don't let it consume you. Don't become obsessed. And focus, focus on things that you can control. I, th I see a lot of guys obsessing about shit that's outside of their control, uh, including macro things like, um, you know, we were doing a debate last night. One of the guys, he said, hey, man, aren't you worried that, you know, uh, he's like, in your photos, you look like a seven. In real life, you're like a 5.5. And then you're telling your clients to look better in their photos than they do in real life. Now, granted, we're not talking about like catfish. What, what's makeup? What's an Instagram filter? Right, right, right. But, but so what he's saying is like, don't you feel like you're adding to the culture of, you know, this culture of where, you know, people are fake. And I'm like, I have no control of the macro of the culture of the dating scene. It's, yeah, the, you're marketing, you're marketing I'm yourself. Not, I'm not the president of Tinder. I'm not the president of the United States. All I have these is the, these the, are the rules. Yeah, these so are the focus, rules. Again. Focus on the micro, focus on improving your own life. Don't get bogged down with a macro and the things that are outside of your control. You can, you can think about them as a thought experiment, but nothing more. Uh, that's why a lot of shit I see on the YouTube is people complaining about the macro. They're not talking about the things that they can do. They're just bitching about this and that. That's not fair. And there are a lot of things that are not fair in life, like for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's um, that's why like some like some of Bulldog Mindset's uh, views on stuff is because he's all about like not succumbing to this victimization. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like, like that. Going the, going the other direction. Like, look at him. He was like fat and pimply and like totally fucked by all conventional standards he became jacked rich and now he has an awesome girlfriend and this and that he didn't go like you know bang tons of chicks route but he's very fulfilled he's he, he he's a model role model you know for masculinity and stuff like that so and, and he's helping guys that's it needs to go in that direction 
giving guys a positive message to better themselves and work with what you do have rather than giving up and, and resenting and hating and all this bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, man, uh, check out uh, John's channel, guys, John Anthony Lifestyle. He's got some good content on there. Do you still have infield on your channel? I privated it all after. And for those, yeah, I get comments. Oh, well, we can't trust you. Have no infield. I filmed for five days a week for like a full year. I have over a hundred infield pulls on camera. It's mostly my products. I privated it once they started fucking nailing channels like Squat and Casanova and Tom Torero for recording illegal infield of actual fucking. And so those guys. You know that we lost our fucking Vimeo accounts. I had that for like seven years. It like took down all my products. So we had to like go to different platforms and stuff. But yeah, it's basically there's always like shit storms due to fucking retardation in this industry. The, the industry gets a horrible name. There's always someone doing something totally crazy, and then you know the whole industry gets labeled as being part of that. I don't so I don't see myself as like in the same category as almost any of these other coaches besides maybe you, and a couple other exceptions. It's like. Yeah, I don't really consider myself as a PUA in the pickup industry. I do by definition, I guess, but by definition only. But we're not we're not encouraging like clownery antics or like you know all these things to get people in trouble, like Julian choking a girl, right? Like you know, Bradicus blew up Mexico, Austin Summers blew up Colombia. There was the guys that blew up the UK. Um, you know, RSD got banned from Australia and England and all this shit. And, it, and my squad in Casanova blew shit up more in Vegas of Tom Torero in England. And it just keeps fucking going. RSD used to actually <clears throat> explicitly give out law breaking advice, like disable the girl's phone, like literally break the phone or, or like throw it in the bushes or whatever so that she can't contact her friends. That was like premier advice they would give in their videos and on the forums. And it's just fucking sad, man. Cause they're like, when you fucking have a system that works and then you get lumped in with all these fucking retards between all the scammers, all the people that are misleading guys, all the people that are leading guys down negative paths and then all the people that are like creating bad press for the space. I guess that's what makes our jobs fun. <laughs> yeah. Just all the guys in the pickup community who are extremely socially awkward, like all the uh, coaches who are like, can't hold a conversation for more than two minutes. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You meet these guys yeah. in, in real life and everyone's like, looking down and they're like like david swift uh, that blew my mind we can talk shit on him now that you guys don't work together or i can at least well no i have a truce with him but go ahead <laughs> but like he's like i don't want to interact with the girl at all in person because i'm like too nervous and shy and like i just want to like have sex and have her leave immediately after because i'm like too nervous to talk to her like what the fuck are you talking about or like squat and casanova saying like <laughs> back in 2013 that he doesn't even like talking to girls and rather play video games. And then Max has the same fucking mindset. And it's like, what? Like, I, I can't even imagine this. Are people saying like charisma Kings, like, like terrified to approach. These are the guys that are, that are like supposed to be helping everyone. And, and, and they're like, not even some of the worst defenders. Look at fucking RST Tyler and Royal Tomasi and Derek Moneyberg. And, you know, it's bad, dude. It's, you know, what can you do? That's our world. That I, I really liked when Jay Vincent was like, I go, dude, how many other, you have like a super legit fitness system backed by science and data and stuff, just like me in the dating space. How many other YouTube channels would you recommend? He goes, just two. And he goes, one of them has two K subs. And Jay only had three and a half K subs when we made that video. And now he's got like six. But like, that was like me and you. Like, I remember you had like four K subs. I had like 10 K. And I was like, you got to look at the playing with fire stuff. And everyone's like, he only has 4K subs. We're going to follow these other fucking retards that have like 500,000 or, you know. Yeah, there's no correlation between cloud and quality of advice. Yep. Yeah. That, that, and that's like the argument Fresh and Fit used. They're like, why haven't you responded to any of John Anthony's objectively valid points? And they're like, the student has surpassed the master. That's all. <laughs> what, <is> that, <laughs> what does that mean? You guys got more subs from doing fake alpha kickouts? Okay, yeah, nice, nice way to surpass. Right. Uh, but anyway, so um, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, check out John's channel, subscribe to him. We got more live streams coming up this week and this weekend. We got more videos dropping, so check all that out. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.